okay, I did have my doubts. You know, I wondered if the rules would work. I wondered how the rounds would work. And I wondered if I was just wasting my money or was this going to be an awesome event. Don't get me wrong. I love ADCC. But as a fan, the Craig Jones Invitational has been hard to ignore. Especially for these past few months where people are dropping out of ADCC to go and compete at CJI for a chance at a million dollars. And it had you guessing like, who the heck is going to be next? Is it going to be Habib? Is it going to be a championship level MMA fighter? It's like as fans, we didn't know what to expect and Craig Jones just kept us on our toes, especially when he dropped the news that he was going to give away Gordon Ryan's Miata. And one aspect of it too was the stakes kept on getting higher and higher it seemed, you know. Not only were they competing for a million dollars, but these athletes were putting their professional careers on the line, facing possible retaliation for dropping out of ADCC and competing at CGI. And I guess it remains to be seen whether they will face some consequences or not. After witnessing this whole spectacle online for the past few months, you know, texting my buddies back and forth, oh my gosh, did you see who just joined CGI? Who's gonna be next? I decided I'd fly from Dallas, Texas to Las Vegas to witness this thing firsthand. And I gotta say, I did have my doubts. You know, I wondered if the rules would work. I wondered how the rounds would work. And I wondered if I was just wasting my money or was this gonna be an awesome event. But I gotta say, out of CJI itself, I did have a good time in Las Vegas. Some safer work stuff I could tell you, you know. Um, I brought my mom out there as well because it was her birthday. And we went to buffets, went to shows, stuff like that, had a good time. But after I lost all my money on red, um, I did go to the Thomas and Mac Arena for CJI. And there I saw so many people, you know, people were buying so much CJI merch, like huge lines, buying rash guards, shirts, stuff like that. And the energy was really high, but the top rows are sparse. And you know, if you've ever been to a combat sports event, this is really common. People just wait for like the main card or you know, the main fighters that they want to see or whatever. And so it was sparse on top, the top rows, but there was still a good amount of people watching the first few matches. And there were some really good matches, you know, but my favorite moments from that day was uh, Luke Rockhold versus Pat Downey, you know, the double butt scoot to the center. That was very memorable. <laughs> And after the under 80 kilogram division started, I left the venue to go celebrate my mom's birthday. And I remember looking at my phone like later on and the event was still going on like eight hours in. And I was like, yo, I don't know if I could sit there and watch jujitsu, you know, watch two guys roll around on the ground for nine, 10 hours. But uh, I don't know if I could watch anything for 10 hours. You know, that was just a really long day that I'm glad uh, that I was not in the latter part of, even though there were some really entertaining matches. Now the second day of CJI was freaking amazing. You know, people were in the stands, it was filling up by the minute and the stakes were so high, you know, Nikki Rod is choking everybody out to the semifinals. And of course, like anticipating the match between Cade Ruotolo and Andrew Tackett, you knew it was gonna be fire, you knew it was gonna be good. And they delivered and they deserved to take a bow. And I remember everyone on their feet chanting one more round thinking that this should be like a finals match or something, you know? Uh, that's a match that's gonna go down in history that people are still talking about to this day and they'll be talking about for a very long time Those guys put on a show and they're only like 21 years old Like it was just amazing to watch then I remember seeing Fionn Davis versus Mackenzie Dern That was really interesting, you know two generations of female ADCC champions going at it And Fionn Davis came out with the win. She did awesome and so did Mackenzie Dern But that was really cool to watch and then of course, you know, you had the first intergender match in history super fight you know it was craig jones versus gabby garcia gabby garcia came out stole the crowd's heart craig jones came out took his pants off um it was, it was a good match overall and uh, gabby garcia just won the crowd over you know such a warrior spirit in her when she was just like she didn't care about the hall of fame of adcc she's like she cares about you know put on a show for the crowd and things of that nature and then of course you had Hinato laranja 27 time world champion there uh crazy for craig jones to bring this guy back and uh you know first have the interview between them and then him coaching craig through fighting gabby garcia but that was super entertaining so for the finals matches you know a million dollars on the line you had k ruotolo versus levi jones leary and uh felipe andrew versus nicky rod and man i remember when nicky rod sunk in the rnc against felipe and you know he took off his shirt finally expressed his emotions like ah oh, like yeah i want this million dollars and uh, he had that bad ad call out, man. That super awesome call out against Gordon Ryan. Uh, I thought it was legendary and it was cool to witness. And then the match between Kate Ruotolo versus Levi Jones Leary is very interesting 
being in the crowd, you know, some people were booing every time Levi pulled guard. And some people were like justifying like, man, it's kind of like Greco versus folk style or something like that. You know, this is just another style of jujitsu. Like, go ahead and pass, you know, and Levi's guard was impassable, impenetrable. But uh, I think Cade lost some uh, lost some fans after that, you know, just because of some comments he made and some some of his antics during the event, you know, the slaps against Mateus Denise. So right after the event ended, Craig Jones announced that everyone here would get free access to the club. So some people were going there, but I remember walking out of the venue and seeing a crowd of people gathered around a single trash can. And it was just people watching the UFC event, you know, Drikas Duplessis versus Israel Adesanya. And uh, it was a phone on top of a trash can. And so I stayed and watched her with him and I watched uh, Drikas defeat Izzy, but that was super funny. Also, an honorable mention about my time in Las Vegas, I went to uh, an open mat at Simgo Academy, formerly known as Cobra Kai. I got this tank top for the memories, and I actually um, ran into I Justine. I didn't talk to her. She was, uh, I didn't even know who she was, but, you know, I Justine is a YouTuber. I didn't know she was a blue belt. She was there at the open mat, and she took this selfie where I'm actually getting darsed in the back here. So shout out to I Justine. So overall, I believe that CJI was a great event. I thought it was great for the sport. I thought it was entertaining and uh, lived up to the hype. You know, uh, there's some things that can be improved for sure. But let me know what you thought about CJI. Was it the greatest event uh, in grappling history? Did you watch CJI or did you watch ADCC? Uh, let me know what you thought about the whole thing. Also, if you love jujitsu and self-development as much as I do, be sure to tap early, tap often. Tap that like and subscribe button so you don't miss the next video, and I'll see you next time.